What up, guys? Carolina Jack Pot coming at you Sunday afternoon, May 3rd, 2020. And uh, you see behind me, uh, the sun is really beaming down. It is a beautiful day in upstate South Carolina. Um, this morning uh, and or the early part of the afternoon, I uh, did the old grass cutting thing. And now I'm going to go back out when I'm done with this video and do the ceremonial trimming of the hedges. No, not the trimming of George's hedges uh, like my Gamecocks did last October. This is actually the trimming of my personal hedges that have become a little bit overgrown with morning glory and kudzu vines uh, outside my trailer. So I got to clean up a little bit. But... I wanted to jump on here and do another installment of the Retro Rewind that I kicked off a couple of weeks ago with the South Carolina versus Appalachian State game in 2019 that really didn't end so good for the Gamecocks, but that comes at a good point. You have got to visit the bad as well as the good. You can't just dwell on the great things that happened in the past in your program's history. If you do, you know, you're just going to be wearing a happy face around all the time. You have to look at some things that uh, your team could improve on, uh, some things that you can rant about a little bit because uh, on a guy like me and my channel, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's what you live for, right? So actually today, though, we're going to get in the way back machine and we're going to travel all the way back to um the year 2009 uh, that's right the first full year uh, of presidency of a man named barack obama 2009 when we were uh in the midst of uh, i don't know it was a weird time in america the the economy was on the downturn but maybe it was starting to to come back a little bit in 09 and uh things were on the uptick Things were definitely not on the uptick the last game of the regular season for the South Carolina Gamecocks. They came in with a record of 6-5. and five. Now, this team started out 6-2 and two, uh, under Steve Spurrier, but had lost its last three games uh, of the regular season versus uh, Tennessee, uh, one of my favorite teams, uh, on the road at Arkansas and at home against number one Florida. They lost by 10 points uh, on November 3rd. 14th, 2009. This game versus the Clemson Tigers takes place in December, or excuse me, November 28th, uh, 2009. So they had a bye week uh, to prepare for the Taters. I didn't remember that because uh, we had a bye week last year, it seems like. Both teams did, which was a little bit weird, just the way the scheduling fell out. But we came in 6-5, and five, and uh, there, there wasn't a lot of hope. Uh, Clemson came into this thing with an 8-3 and three record. Uh, this was their last game of the regular season. They're ranked number 16 in some polls, number 18 in some others. Uh, they had kind of a semi-embarrassing loss the second game of the season on the road at Georgia Tech. Um, if, you're, have, if you've ever searched GIFs sometimes to, uh, you know, to, um, you know, to make a mockery of Clemson or whatever, if you're in Facebook or something, you'll see the little GIF that's got two of the Clemson students in the end zone bleachers that are almost totally empty, one with his head down like this, and the other one takes his hat off. It's like, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. that came from the 2009 Clemson versus Georgia Tech game. The more you know. But they had beaten some sound teams. They'd beaten Florida State, who was in the last year uh, of the Bobby Bowden era. Um, they had uh, also won on the road uh, at number 10 Miami. Uh, this was back when Miami was, like, you know, positioned to uh, take that top spot in the ACC Coastal, uh, which we know didn't really happen for, like, another 10 years. But uh, it did eventually happen uh, when it did. Uh, they kind of got smacked around a little bit. But... Enough about that. Clemson comes in eight and three. South Carolina comes in six and five. We're on a downward spiral. They're on an uptick. Who's going to win this game? In Williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, about 80,000 fans in attendance for this one, which is not a sellout, but uh, it's pretty damn close. Probably the best uh, crowd of the year. Um, only behind the game against uh, the number one Florida Gators. They played earlier in the season. I think you will see, uh, as this one unfolds, the um, rigors of an SEC schedule, especially back then and back in the day, really, really um, helped out the Gamecocks uh, as this game progressed. 
And I'm going to link the uh, uh, link that I'm going to watch this video from in the description box below. Uh, it's by a YouTube uploader by the name of Jay Law. Jay Law uh, only has 100 and something subs, so I guess he monetizes videos or anything. Uh, this one only has 80, video, uh, 80 views on the video, and it was uploaded about a year ago. So I can guarantee you, I'll link it in the description box below. All the Carolina Jackpot fans, when you're watching this game, uh, go back and uh, you know, kind of, I don't know, on one device, maybe your uh, TV or something, if you got your uh, uh, YouTube hooked up there, watch that, turn the sound down, listen to Carolina Jackpot, talk about this game, old Jay Law will double his views on that video, at least, no doubt. Let's get right on into this thing thing and uh, see what we got going on. South Carolina Clemson, 2009. This is really an underrated game, too, uh, in the uh, series of South Carolina Clemson games that uh, we'll be talking about on this channel, at least until the coronavirus is over. Um, I remember uh, I was working that day, and I got off work at 12. So I got off work at 12, and this game kicked off uh, at 12. And... Um, I actually missed the opening kickoff of it and, and just a little bit of the first quarter because I had to leave and I had to go pick my son up. He was only like seven, maybe, at the time. Something like that. It was pretty little. And I had to pick him up his mom's and then take him over to my house where we sat and we watched uh, you know, the rest of the game together. But um, I missed the opening kickoff, which uh, the Gamecocks either sailed it out of bounds or we got a... a, a uh, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct or something like that on the opening kickoff. So we uh, had to back it up and kick it off again. And this time, uh, we are going to see, as the towels wave in the background, you see some sandstorm playing there. Um, the ball spotted the kickoff here. And I'm not sure who was kicking the ball off for us at that time. Spencer Lanning was the, uh, the extra point and field goal kicker. I think he may have been the kickoff guy too, but he doesn't get it in the end zone. He kicks it to the nation's most dangerous return man, C.J. Spiller, who takes it at the 14, cuts to his left, makes one move at midfield, and shake on to the end zone. C.J. Uh, with the special teams touchdown. Uh, he was in Heisman Trophy talks this year. He was definitely a uh, Heisman Trophy uh, contender in 2009, one of the fastest guys on the planet. And, of course, the uh, um, Tiger Rag is playing in the background. Da, 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 da. It was extra points kicked up good there. I don't know who that uh, extra point kicker was. It may have been Richard Jackson, may have been his name. Or um, it wasn't Catanzaro, I think it was before him. But we see Steven Garcia with the keeper, uh, bull in the head over midfield there. Garcia was uh, a really special um, dual threat quarterback at South Carolina. I, um, you know, and I'll pause this thing sometimes here uh, just to talk a little bit. But uh, Steven Garcia you know, had a lot of uh, disappointments uh, in his uh, career. Most of them <laughs> brought on by himself. Uh, as you know, Connor Shaw. Uh, followed him, and he was a really, really good dual-threat quarterback who did all the right things. Steven Garcia was a really good dual-threat quarterback who did all the wrong things off the field. Uh, he always stayed in trouble. He stayed in trouble at practice. He stayed in trouble with his coaches. And uh, ultimately, in 2011, it led to his dismissal from the team. And it was just sad, man. And uh, I, I like to see now that he's kind of – Turned his life around. He cleaned up a little bit. I see him on Twitter and stuff like that. But um, I have nothing but love for Steven Garcia. Um, he wasn't the mold of a prototypical quarterback that we'd see. Um, he was kind of, I mean, he wasn't that tall. He was kind of, if you looked at him from far, he's kind of pudgy looking. And he really didn't look like a quarterback. Uh, but this guy, I mean, he could throw the hell out of that rock, and um, he could uh, take off running up the middle uh, like nobody's business. I mean, really, really uh, a special athlete. Just a shame that things didn't pan out for him um, like I thought that uh, they would, like most South Carolina fans thought we would. We see a little slant here to Alshon Jeffrey in his freshman year, fumbles the ball, and uh, there's a little scurry for it there, and it is recovered um, by – uh, the Gamecocks. So we get the ball back there um, 
and then Garcia, we see him drop back again, and uh, he throws over the middle, and that one's picked off by Rashad Hall for the Tigers. Of course, he's a good athlete. His last name's Hall, just like Carolina Jackpot. Number 31 uh, makes the pick there, and uh, they're in business again. Um, moving the ball here, we see Kyle Parker slinging it to Jacoby Ford, who gets out of bounds near uh, midfield, and um, hands the ball off there is uh, Jamie Harper, running uh, across midfield into Gamecock territory. Um, Parker, again, fires this one for Ford again. Uh, he looked like the only receiving target they had there for a while uh, in this game. Really, most of the throws went to him. Uh, Jamie Harper, again, fumbles the football, and this one's picked up by Nick number 40, Eric Norwood. Man, he could bring it. This dude can lay the wood. Middle linebacker for the Gamecocks takes off, and he dude falls down, stumbles, and bumbles. It's his own uh, momentum. Uh, he, he tackled himself there. He could have probably gotten another 15, 20 yards. Tosses the ball up in the air, and the Gamecocks in business again. Here we see uh, Garcia with the fake there. Long downfield pass, Alshon. This simply uh, – Jumps over uh, Clemson defender and uh, falls down about their seven-yard line. So we're in business again. Man, he was a special player too. God, I wish we had some of those kind of playmakers on our team right now. I miss old number one. Now we see Garcia, the option pitch to number 10. Was he? Brian Maddox. Brian Maddox, really underrated player for the Gamecocks. Uh, from back then, a lot, of, a lot of people talk about him anymore. He's from T.L. Hanna High School uh, in Anderson, South Carolina, right near here. We see Spencer Lanning boot the extra point up and through, and we are, at this point, we are tied. Um, Parker uh, uh, rushing around there. Uh, we see the pass completed uh, once again to uh, Jacoby Ford. <sighs> Parker slinging it again. There we go. Uh, interception, and that one was picked off by Devontae Holloman. Rumbling down the sideline, he's down, knocked down at the 10-yard line of the Taters. Uh, Ford chased him down on that one to save a touchdown. Forgot how good Devontae Holloman was, too. Garcia dropped back pass. Complete into the end zone for the touchdown. is tight end, number 89, or number 88, was he? Yeah. Can't, can't see that good. The quality on this one is not great. Big Wesley Saunders. Everybody remembers him on the Gamecocks Pass. He spelled his name uh, with the E on the end, so different variation of the spelling of the word Wesley. Uh, he was a hell of a player for us. Good tight end. Spencer Landing boots the extra point up again and through, and all of a sudden Gamecocks 14-7 lead it with two minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, turnovers playing a big part there. C.J. Spiller is taken down. Um... Wow, that one's just uh, – especially Gamecocks got the ball back now, 11.51. Uh, and that – here comes Brian Maddox at you again. Uh, knocked down about the 30-yard line. I have to go, uh, go back and refer to my notes a little bit on this game. Uh, they're kind of like Uncle Lou's uh, copious notes. If you've ever watched Uncle Lou's YouTube channel, uh, I'm sure you have. They're just, uh, man, there are so many players on here that I, I remember, but uh, I don't remember, uh, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, there's just been so many uh, over the years. Um, so he gets us there in range, a 47-yard field goal attempt. Uh, Spencer Landing clanks it off the right, upright, and through 17-7 Gamecocks with 10:44 left in the first half. We're up on the Tigers by 10 points at this time. Very nice, very nice. Um, Parker with him around midfield. He drops back and fires to no one on third down. So uh, Clemson is at the punting situation again. Uh, the Gamecocks with the ball back now in Clemson territory, or in our own territory there. We complete a pass uh, up around midfield uh, there, uh, pushed out. That's Brian Maddox again uh, on the reception. And Garcia and the Gamecocks back. Work again. He drops back uh, over midfield there. Stumbles. Uh, Kenny Miles almost picked that one up, but he could not get it. And um, we turned the ball over to them on punt. Uh, Kyle Parker coming back again. Six minutes left in the first half. Uh, tries a little pass there. Looked like to spill her over the middle, and uh, he gets flagged for it. Looks like uh, holding uh, on the taters. So uh, 
They're going to have to punt the ball away to the Gamecocks again. And it looks like we get a piece of that punt by a young man. I think his name was Andy Teasdall, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, and the Tigers recovered the punt. Uh, the uh, there's a lot going on there in this play. Uh, I'm not really exactly sure what happened with that. We might have to watch the actual whole game over again. I'm just not going to do that. But uh, – no problem. Uh, they take the ball back. I thought it was roughing the uh, punter there, I think, was the call. So with four minutes left in the first half, they have the ball back. Almost to midfield again. Uh, Parker completes to Michael Palmer. The tight end, someone else finally catching a pass. Uh, there we see uh, young Andre Ellington uh, carrying the ball for them. Uh, Parker drops back again, incomplete. Um, just they couldn't get anything going in the first half offensively uh, at all, at all. Uh, third quarter, we're uh, seeing action again. The Tigers with the ball uh, again. Uh, looks like Spiller fumbles the football, and um, it is uh, going to be recovered there by the Gamecocks. That was copious notes here. Um, Darian Stewart, who caused the fumble, not sure who was it. Recovered that one, um, but Gamecocks in business again. Alshon Jeffrey uh, catches for first down. Still 17-7 Gamecocks. <sighs> Garcia drops back again, fires incomplete on third down. So still kind of dicey here at this point. Uh, field goal attempt, Spencer Lanning gets it blocked. Um, so there's a good uh, opportunity to score that was thwarted by the uh, Clemson special teams uh, crew. Uh, incomplete pass there. No, actually, that was a completion. Gamecocks with the ball back eight minutes in the third quarter. Uh, Garcia is going to fire there. Once again, Mo Brown knocked out of bounds around the Clemson 26-yard line, and we are in business again. Here we go, taking off. That's uh, – Kenny Miles, uh, number 21, before Marcus Lattimore wore it. Uh, we're picking up a first down, and we are deep down inside Tater territory inside the 15-yard line. Garcia going to fire a touchdown pass in the right corner of the end zone. Tory Gurley, touchdown Carolina. Touchdown Tory Gurley. And it is now 24-7 after the Spencer Lanning extra point. Uh, 7.47 left in the third quarter, and we uh, are firmly in control of this one uh, at this point in Tiempo. Uh, Clemson just can't get anything going. Kyle Parker uh, dropping back again. Uh, he fires there and is complete to Michael Palmer, the tight end, who is actually getting into uh, – some action here. We are 11 minutes left to play in the game at this point in time. Uh, still 24-7. Carolina firmly in command. Uh, Parker, a little pump fake there. And uh, fires incomplete uh, for uh, Michael Palmer. On um, fourth down, they're going to kick the field goal here. Uh, and that field goal attempt is, once again, can't remember who that field goal kicker was. Uh, if you know who it was and you're a Tater fan, please chime in. My thoughts is it was Richard Jackson from Riverside High School uh, near here in Greer, South Carolina, but I could be wrong. There we'll see a young Dabo Sweeney clapping for the complete field goal, bringing them back within two touchdowns. And now a long run there, Kenny Miles. Um, down to, uh, well, we're inside the Clemson territory again. We're uh, inside, their, uh, inside the 40 at this point, uh, 8 and 40 to go. In the ball game, uh, Kenny Miles again, or who was that? I don't think that was Kenny Miles. Um, here we see Brian Maddox fighting for the first down. Five minutes left in the game now. Uh, Garcia with the keeper. We're, we're looking up at going up like 31-10. It doesn't happen, though. Um, Garcia stopped there by uh, DeAndre McDaniel. Uh, laid the smackdown on Garcia, kind of like he laid the smackdown on his girlfriend a little bit later in his career. Spencer Lanning, 38-yard field goal attempt is good. And we are up 27-10 with five minutes left in this game. There's young Dabo again looking disappointed, and it is all but in the bag. Kyle Parker fires to Michael Palmer again near midfield, number 86 with a big grab. This guy was good, wasn't he? Yeah, he was uh, – 
he made Jordan Leggett look like child's play. Michael Palmer, best tight end in Clemson history, in my opinion. There he is inside the 25-yard line. Mike Palmer picks it up again. The uh, Parker to Palmer connection was lethal on this drive, and now we see uh, Michael Palmer again down the seam, running the post route, touchdown, Clemson. Touchdown, Michael Palmer. 27-17 uh, after the extra point by the unknown kicker. We got 346 left, and there we see a few Clemson fans, a few still remaining in the stands, putting their hands together for their team. They're only down by 10 at this point, and we're going to see them try an onside kick with 346 left, which is uh, woefully unsuccessful. Carolina player, that's out. Garcia here up under center again, fakes, and he's going to throw a little fade in the back of the end zone to Wesley Saunders again. Snags his second touchdown pass of the day, and it is 34-17 Carolina. The crowd here has gone nuts. They're really into it the entire time. Here you see Steve Spurrier smiling. Garcia, yeah, he knows what he's done. They've just taken uh, a win back in the series from the Taters who had won in 2007 and 2008. We take this one in 2009. Uh, we'll see Par Parker there throwing uh, – a route out the sideline to Park uh, Palmer again, trying to get his team back into it. Wouldn't happen. Um, get, this was the Gamecocks' day. Um, they're once again short on uh, – here we are, fourth and four. They're going to go for it. This is the end of the game, and Parker incomplete. Really forgot how much of a bitch this guy was and uh, how much I didn't like him as a quarterback. And I, I make jokes now and say, you know, talk about Trevor Lawrence and say he's a bitch, this, that, and other. I really don't know Trevor Lawrence. In fact, as I've said in a recent video, never even heard the guy speak. Um, I didn't like Kyle Parker – just because of not really so much this game, but the 2010 South Carolina Clemson game, which we may cover in long form on here, or we may not, if the coronavirus uh, situation ends uh, sooner than later. Uh, but he really, really acted like a little kid who got the red, licked off his candy um, during that 2010 South Carolina Clemson game, ran uh, off the field, uh, looked like he kind of uh, had some salty words for Dabo, and he got benched in uh, favor of a freshman by the name of Tasha Boyd, who would go on to lose four games in a row to the Gamecocks. But tough day for the Tigers here in 2009. There we see Speed J. Spiller uh, with the Gatorade towel over his helmet, draped over it, look, wearing look, uh, that, looking like a nun right there. I guess the old Heisman Trophy. Uh, hopes and uh, talks and dreams are probably out the window. And once again, Clemson with no Heisman Trophy winners uh, to speak of. Here we see Spurrier uh, congratulate one of the Clemson uh, grad assistants at midfield. And that's about it, guys. So uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. Uh, uh, it was nice to uh, be able to take one back from these clowns after uh, – getting our nuts drug across our chin the past uh, couple of years in a row. And um, yeah, good times, good times back in 2009. Uh, that one was certainly, uh, like I said, a, a great uh, Carolina-Clemson game and uh, one for the books and a very underrated one as far as I'm concerned. I hope you enjoyed that trip down memory lane. Once again, if you want to watch that one back with me, uh, go back and view it on the J Law YouTube channel, which I will link down in the description box below to this video. And uh, let's help him get uh, at least up to over 100 views on that video. Guys, I will see y'all later. I'm going to head back out for some more rest, relaxation, and yard work, if you know what I'm saying. As always, this Carolina Jackpot video has been brought to you by Miller Light and Jubilation. I'll see y'all later. Appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out. Go Gamecocks. Spurs up to my toes up, baby. Ah, ah, ah. Woo. Fire boom.